Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm a short, overweight, middle-aged black dude. I've got thinning brown hair, black glasses. I'm wearing a dark gray t-shirt and I'm sitting in my office with a couple of colored lights behind me. And in this video, I'd like to try and explain to you how to charge an electric car at home. Now, I will start off by saying that a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about are kind of high, le high levels, not really the right word, but kind of generic averaging things out. So there might be a few numbers and figures that I give to you which aren't 100% accurate, but I'm averaging them out to make it as simple as possible for you to understand. Right, let's get started. First thing I want to say is that there's two sort of main charging speeds that you have with an electric car. If you're charging it via AC, which is alternating current, or DC, which I believe is direct current. So we're not going to worry about direct current because most home chargers, in fact all home charging, will be done at AC charging speeds. Cool. The other thing that I think is worth knowing is how the, the battery capacity of an electric car is measured. So like your gas tank, you measure, you know, you have X amount of litres or gallons in your gas tank. With an electric car, you've got X amount of kilowatt hours in your battery. That's how it's measured. So for example, I've got an entry level Tesla Model Y, which I believe has got a 60 kilowatt hour battery. And then the rate of speed or the power you put into it is measured in kilowatts. So for example, if I was charging my car at 10 kilowatts, that would say that I'm putting in 10 kilowatts per hour, a 60 kilowatt battery, it's gonna take six hours to go from zero to 100 at 10 kilowatts per hour for a 60 kilowatt battery. Now, this is the challenge here with explaining this sort of stuff and why I'm sort of averaging out is that batteries charge at different rates depending on what capacity they're at. So for example, if your battery is between, let's say 20 or 80%, it's probably gonna charge quite quickly. But when your battery gets to 80%, between that 80 and 100%, the battery charging actually slows down a little bit. So this is why it's kind of, well, that's not entirely accurate, but we're averaging out to explain the, the basic stuff. So. Let's first have a look at the different types of, I was about to say chargers, but again, technically the thing that's you're plugging into your car, that's not your charger. The thing that's charging your car, the charging bit, is actually in the car. The thing that you're plugging into the car is technically the wall charger, but I might alternate between calling it charger or connector, depending if I can remember. So let's first have a look at what's called the UMC or universal, oh, I don't even know what you <laughs> UMC stands for Universal Mobile Connector. That's what it is, Universal Mobile Connector. Uh, this is the connector that you just plug into the wall. Now this used to come with um, Tesla Model Ys and Model 3s. I believe in some areas of the world it still does come with it, but at least in Australia it doesn't come with it anymore, which is unfortunate. So if you don't have one of these, you definitely want to go out and get one. And I'll mention this quite a lot throughout the video. But let's go outside and have a look at what that actually is and how that one works. This is the UMC or mobile connector that used to come by default with the Tesla's. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with it anymore. Let's open it up and have a look what is inside there. So, in there you've got your two adapters. Let's put those to the side for the moment. And this is your wall connector. So that is the bit that goes into the car. That's called a Type 2 CCS connector. That is the wall charger. And you can see that attaches to these sorts of plugs. So those are your adapters. And you've got two adapters here. So the one, this one, this is, you can see this is slightly thicker. So if you have a look at these right next to each other, let me just pull this out of the way a little bit. There we go. So if you see these right next to each other, I don't know if you can tell sort of closely enough, but that one is smaller than that one. So you can see the plug there a little bit bigger. So this is just sort of your normal wall socket. Here is a normal extension cord. So you would just plug that in and it would fit just fine. But if you tried to plug this bigger one in, it wouldn't fit because it's too big. So this is your 15 amp one and that is for this kind of extension cord which we got at Bunnings which is a local hardware store here in Australia, a local hardware chain. So that's 15 amps. That's going to charge a little bit quicker. So 15 amps, 10 amps. Um, there isn't any labeling on them as far as I can tell but you can see quite clearly which one's the bigger one and the thicker one and then in terms of 
popping it in, you just plug that into here. And let's go plug that in and see how that works. Right, well here we are at the charging port of the car. Now, as I mentioned, this UMC, the mobile connector, this is the slowest charging option you can get. And at the moment, it's just plugged into the wall in my garage. So to open the charging port, you can either use the app, you can either tap on here to open it like that, but also what you can do is you can push the little button on the charging plug, and that'll open up the port as well. And then you've got this colored light here, so sort of light, light blue. You pop it in, it goes solid blue, it starts flashing, and when it turns green, the car is charging. It's as simple as that. So now let's go and have a look in the car and see what's what. So you can see here that we're charging at two kilowatts and it's going to take us one hour and 15 minutes to 5% at this. Now keep in mind also obviously that because we're between 80 and 100%, it is going to be a lot slower. This would charge actually quicker if we were between that 20 and 80% battery charge. To then disconnect the charger, it's as simple as coming over, pushing the white button, turns white, pull out, and you're done. One of the things that I really want to get across about the UMC wall connector is that it's really helped alleviate a lot of stress for me knowing how well and easily it works because, you know, knowing that I can just plug into any wall socket anywhere means that worse comes to worse if in the highly unlikely case that I'm in the middle of nowhere and I run out of power, I can just go up to, you know, a, a, a you know, a, a shop or something go, hey, do you mind if I, you know, give, me, give you 20 bucks or what have you, and can I just plug my car in for an hour or two and get enough juice so I can get to a more dedicated, faster charger. So just knowing how easy it is to use that and just having it in my car all the time means that in the highly unlikely that that would happen, it's going to be fine. Just knowing that I can use it like that has really been nice to know and alleviate a lot of stress, not so much for me, but more for my wife, because she had quite a lot of range anxiety about using an electric car. So yeah, it's, it's been a really good experience for me just, just using that a couple of times. So that's the UMC or Universal Mobile Connector. I remember what it is now. And as you saw, you know, it only charges at two kilowatts per hour. Now, if you're using the 15 amp plug it will charge at three kilowatts per hour so that gives you an extra kilowatt per hour um, and if you want to get a 15 amp plug installed in your house i think you do need to get an electrician to come in and and put that in for you but it's the cost isn't exorbitant from what i understand now a lot of people might have been looking at that going wow two kilowatts per hour and it's going to take like an hour and 50 minutes to go from 95 to 100 percent that's that's really slow now it is slow but if you think about the way most people do city driving, let's say you drive 50 to 100 kilometers per day, that's gonna use up about uh, maybe 20, 25, no, not even, 100, 400, yeah, that's gonna use 20, 25% of the battery. So let's say you need to charge from 75 or 80% 80, 80 to 100 every night. Overnight at two kilowatts per hour, that's probably gonna do that easily overnight. So if you're only doing 50 to 100 Ks per day, using the UMC at home every night, absolutely fine, no problem. The other thing to look at is whether you get your battery up to 80% or 50%. So a lot of people will be used to only setting their batteries to charge up to 80% and not charging it all the way to 100. Now, it's best to read the manual. I know, I'm like, a really, I should hand in my man card, but I actually read the manual for the car. And the manual for my particular Tesla, so different Teslas have different types of batteries. The type of battery that my Tesla has, the recommendation is to actually charge the battery up to 100% at least once a week. And keeping it at 100 is absolutely no problem. In fact, one of the things that they recommend is when you're not using the car, leave it plugged in. The logic behind that is that if the car needs to maintain the battery by warming the car up a little bit or cooling the car down to maintain the battery temperature, it'll use the wall power instead of using the battery power to do that. So that's the logic with my car. But very important, read the manual for your specific car to understand what the recommended use case is for the battery in your car. 
Now let's have a look at a dedicated wall connector. Now we got the uh, Tesla Generation 3 one um, and we are a single phase house. So that will charge the car at a maximum of seven kilowatts per hour. So significantly faster than the UMC. Now, if we were a three phase house, you would think that, oh, well, three times seven is 21. So you would charge at 21 kilowatts per hour. Unfortunately, that's not how it works, because if you remember, I was mentioning that the charge is not actually the thing that's on the wall that you're plugging into the car. The charger is actually in the car. And the charger in the Tesla Model Y and the Tesla Model 3, I believe, can only charge up to 11 kilowatts per hour on an AC charge. So the difference of charging on single phase, seven kilowatts with a dedicated charger, and three phase with the same charger would only be a difference of four kilowatts per hour. It's not three times as fast. So if you are looking at converting your house to three phase instead of single phase, because you think it's going to charge three times as fast, it's not. So just something to keep in mind. So let's just go outside now and have a look at the single phase, seven kilowatts charger that we had installed on the side, not charger connector. I, I'm going to keep getting that wrong, but you know what I mean. So let's go outside and check it out. This is the dedicated wall charge that we got installed. So as I mentioned, we are single phase, so we're getting seven kilowatts charge when we plug this in. One little bit of advice that I will give you, it's sort of a hindsight thing that I wish I'd known. When they were installing this, what I should have asked them is when they were installing this on off switch, is to install it just slightly a little bit more away from this side of the charger, because the holder here for the plug, it's quite tight in here to get that sort of in there. It's a bit of a pain getting it in and out. So if this was just, just a little bit over there, it would have made my life a lot easier. But anyway, not a major. Right, let's go plug this in and see what happens. As you can see, the plug looks pretty much just like the UMC, the mobile one. Um, yeah, pretty much exactly the same. Again, you've got the button to open that up and you pop it in. Flash is blue, wait for green, and you're charging. Let's go have a look in the car. So you can see there now with the wall charger, we are at seven kilowatts, 32 amps, 250 volts. As you can see in the side-by-side -side comparison, when we were charging at two kilowatts, it was gonna take an hour and 50 minutes to fill up that last 5%. And now that we're charging at seven kilowatts, it's only gonna take 55 minutes to fill up that 5%. I will also point out that because we're in that 80 to 100 bracket, the charging isn't as quick. So if we were charging from 20 to 80%, the difference between these two would be even more stark. You'll see also there's an option there to unlock the charging port. So as long as the port is plugged in, it's actually locked in there. So no, no one can just walk up to your car and just pull the, the, the charging cable out. So that's something you don't have to worry about. So I hope that's helped clear up for you, just seeing the different types of uh, connectors that you can get for charging at home. So you've got the UMC, which can plug in via just a standard wall socket, which will charge you up at two kilowatts per hour. You've got um, the 15 amp option on that, if you've got a 15 amp plug. You've then got dedicated wall chargers that if you are a single phase house, which most houses are, will charge at seven kilowatts per hour. And um, you can get a three phase, which will go at 11 kilowatts per hour. Hopefully Maybe that's alleviated um, some stress among some people who haven't got experience with electric cars. It's really pretty straightforward. And I haven't gone very heavily into, well, seven kilowatts will charge uh, from zero to 100 in X amount of hours, because very rarely do you drive your car to zero and get home. I mean, how many people drive their car to empty every day when they get home? So it's not really something that you're gonna do. Most days you're gonna drive to, 70%, maybe 50% and have to charge it up to 50. So it's really not that big a deal. And if you've got solar, which I'll cover this in another video, you can charge your car kind of for free, even though you've paid for the solar panels. I, I do appreciate that. Right, so I hope that's been helpful. I hope all of that made sense. If you have any questions, any other aspects of this that you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. If you have appreciated this, please like and subscribe. And if you've subscribed already, thank you so much for your support. And I'll uh, catch you on the next one. Safe and uh, happy driving.